Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have lots of tea to share, as the kids would say. Caitlin Bristow's podcast, Off the Vine, is off the chain. We've got Katie Thurston sharing all of the details of her breakup with John Hersey. It's been a couple months. Uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, but she talks about the red flags, why it didn't work out. And I'll just have to say this. John's a good guy. Katie's a good gal. And sometimes you just don't have the right personality types or energy to match. That's perfectly fine. No, no sort of character flaw there. Relationships don't work out until they do. We'll get into it. Follow me on Instagram at DNeals. I'm going to be posting a new stand-up comedy clip there. And I'm also on Patreon. Going live at 10 a.m. this morning, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. So it, this starts right at the six-minute mark. Let me tell you something. Stick around. It's going to be a fascinating 15 minutes. It's a it's an interesting listen. We're going to dive right into it. But also, don't forget, this is a clip that we got sent to us today from a teacher who received $1,000 or so worth of classroom supplies from you guys. Uh, every single day, we've got teachers we're donating to all across the country all this stuff it says overwhelm with gratitude and I don't have to. she doesn't have to spend the thousand bucks there she told us that she's starting to plan her family with her husband and she could use the extra money as we all could and um so there's that today's uh teacher of the day is miss drea do i have that pronounced right her birthday was yesterday and here's her teacher's list there'll be a link in the description below go support if you can you can just give any five dollar item nine dollar item you 28 dollar right you can donate whatever it's for her second and third grade special needs classroom be the change you want to see in the world and as i say with this for katie thurston if you like her you're probably going to enjoy this if you don't like her you're pr this is probably going to solidify that as well i don't think anyone's flipping sides i always say when you change the way you look at things the way you look at things changes did i say that right when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change so if you look at it from uh, her place where she was broken up with after she tried to make this relationship work you might be compassionate if you want to look at it as like katie's you know whatever it is you want to uh, uh, ascribe her to be, then you'll also have your answer there. So choose to live in a friendly world or unfriendly world. Let's see if Katie chooses violence in this audio clip. Okay, what happened to you and John? What? She's like, what? <laughs> you know what? Now, well, now, I'm hard left. now I'm here for the clickbait. Okay? Yeah. Six now, minutes in. Now I'm just going to go there. Breaking okay. news. Well, I, I don't know what happened, though. I really don't. What the hell happened with Johnny? Yeah. Well, here, here's what's great. Yeah. It's been like over two months now, yeah. and I feel like I'm in such a good place to talk about it. Yeah. Had you asked me like the week of, yeah. I would have just cried. I'm really? in such and a good place. Stopped. Really? Yes. Wait, I didn't know you were really upset about it. Oh, yeah. He dumped oh, me. I'm sorry. I don't even know if you know that. I knew he dumped you. Yeah. I, I think you told me that. But I actually thought you were kind of going to maybe dump him. So I thought, no. What? No. Look, I bought this man a freaking travel van. I let <laughs> this man quit his job. I was like, whatever you need me to be, I will be, oh, which Katie. in hindsight, it, that's not yeah. healthy. That's not good. Right. You know? Right. No, that's not. But it is a little like offensive to be like, damn, like I gave you everything yeah. and you're still being like, yeah, this isn't working not. out. So how did he do it? He just was over one day and like broke up. With so him? actually, like, I don't did know. you sense it coming? Um. So technically, we. by the way, I've already got five p possible headlines here. She she gives us so many good headlines. She broke up twice. The first oh. time no one knew about. I mean, our, obviously, like our very close friends mm -hmm. did. And maybe like a week or two, we kind of like worked through it and decided to get back together. So I thought we were golden. Because, you know, if you get back together after breakup, right. you're really like you're, committed yeah, to committed. The, whatever the situation is. That you face. Yeah. And then it just like, I think it was just unavoidable. Yeah. We just, I don't know how it happened. Like we just got on a, on a conversation. And at one point I just said to him, I was like, I know more reasons why you don't like me than why you love me. Wow. And that's wow. a really shitty feeling. That is a shitty feeling. You know? And there's, there's a, there's a lot of like give and take when it comes to a relationship. But for me, the big tipping point this to this day will always piss me off. Oh no. He said, you know, I just really need someone who can enjoy my passions and who wants to watch me surf, maybe learn surfing with me, da da da. I'm, I look at him and I go, you realize I jumped out of a yeah, plane. you did for him three times, twice solo skydiving oh, to join God. him in his passions. Yeah, eight hours of ground school. All <laughs> I love this as a rom com. He goes, "I need someone who can enjoy my passion." She goes, "I jumped out of a moving plane, not a not a plane on the tarmac. It was flying in the air, a bird in the sky. I jumped out." 
with a little parachute in the back, and I pulled it. The fact that Katie actually did a free jump is impressive. It's one thing to go tandem on somebody. They strap you in, and yeah. It's another that she jumped out of a plane. That's that, that's a metaphorical and also a very physical feat. These things to partake in his passion. Yeah. And somehow that was completely ignored. Yeah. And like now we're focused on surfing. At that point, I knew nothing I did was going to yeah. ever be good enough. Yeah. So it was really a blessing in disguise because I think I would have, you know, we're such nurturing people, women especially. Mm -hmm. I think I would have stuck it out a lot longer than I should have. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. now I'm in a very good place about it. Yeah. Then. I, I love it though. Like you ever go through a breakup and you just you just defend yourself in your head you have that subconscious judge in your head where it's like your honor i jumped out of a plane you just have this thought so when someone's like had the breakup going you got jumped out of a plane they go huh i jumped out of a plane <laughs> yeah but how's the breakup john i jumped out of a plane i was probably the saddest I've like, oh, ever this was just a couple months ago Katie, yeah I'm oh it's sorry. still really fresh yeah but i'm great like yeah that's good mm -hmm. i cried it out i'm great yeah i went to mexico over yeah. to mexico they say the best way to get over someone is to get under someone. Mm, mm -hmm. She said it, not me. Go but <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, so but you like, had a little Mexican rendezvous. Look, I'm just, I'm just in a good place. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, I realize my good. my worth. I realize what I want. I feel in some ways like so free now mm -hmm. because you know you're always walking on eggshells trying to please someone who's always so dissatisfied. Yeah. And then finally, I'm like, the only person I have to please is myself. Mm hmm. No in, pun intended. I was gonna say, in, yeah. in and out of the bedroom. The self esteem must have been low when you were in the relationship. Oh, I wonder Terribly. why. I why do you think that you were trying to do anything for him to please him and kind of? I feel like you are a very self aware person, and I don't picture you losing yourself in a relationship. So what happened there? I don't know. Like Lose I think yourself. I was just a little bit maybe in denial at first. You know, it was such a big deal to date him so quickly after ending my engagement yeah. with Blake, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So already there was like a lot of like public opinions about that situation, totally. but I was like, he's, he's worth it. Mm -hmm. And it, to this day, it's still a little confusing because since John and I got to know each other as friends, I was like, you knew who I was before we dated. Mm -hmm. So why is it that once we started dating, you started to question like, Oh, I need someone who's this. Well, I never heard. Some I, I get the, I, I get the question. You knew who I was. Once you start dating, you, you, a lot of here a lot of times relationships are messy because you don't know what it is you want. Like John might not know exactly what it is he's looking for. He just realized Katie wasn't it. And that's fine too. So it's one you can pull receipts all day long. What are you talking about? You knew what you were signing up for. Yeah, but I what I realized is I thought I needed this, but I needed this. And that that that's fair. That's fine. But I was that. Right. You know, like it it just really caught me off guard and I just really put like all of my eggs in one basket with this yeah. man and I don't want to say I regret it because I think every relationship is a lesson, totally. but it was just six months crash and burn. Yeah. And that's, wait, six months? Is that mm -hmm. how long it was? Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. It's so hard to, yeah. You'd rather the relationship crash and burn than the airplane you jumped out of the airplane. I feel like the, you know, one of the shitty things about having some sort of platform is people's opinions mm -hmm. and like on your relationship that they, and I always say this, it's perpetuated misogyny that they always think it's the woman's fault. Like, mm -hmm. you must have done always. something wrong oh, for yeah. him to do that, and you weren't enough. And, and by the way, I see this so often. Our audience is 92% women, so obviously there's going to be a skew there. But so many women fall into the rank of going, oh, Katie's doing something wrong. She's 31. Why hasn't she met the right guy? Or, you know, she needs to realize that this or that or the other. And it's like, yikes, yikes, you know? 31, if you don't have a relationship by uh, a, a marriage by then, it's like, you, 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 sometimes you spend two, three, four, five years with somebody that's the wrong person and it saps half of your 20s, you know? It takes a while to figure it out. And what we have now in 2022 with modern technology and modern data is dating is we have more time now biologically speaking maybe that's not the case you've got obviously the bodies uh you know ticking away as it were but we have more time we have more time to spend investing in ourselves and building our our, our work life our friend life so people are settling down later because we're not just dating in the cul-de-sac we're not just dating in the small town of 200 people like you know the world's a little bigger is that like women, America do it. specifically, but in the world that America, I feel like hates 
women. Yeah. I mean, but no, I get so many comments now so, that are like, you're 31 and single. Like, something must be wrong with you. Yeah. Why yeah. does something have to be wrong yeah. with me? Why is it that I just am not going to settle? Yeah. Why is it that I'm just, you know, staying true to myself and I haven't found someone who's going to match that energy? Like, yeah. why is that such a bad thing? The tide's turning. Thankfully. It, it is, but it still, is. it's but it's heavy in the. Oh yeah, the guys. It's always like, what did she do wrong? Oh, uh, even mm-hmm. even me not being married but being engaged for a long time. It's like the co- the comments are always, mm-hmm. um, oh, it's her second engagement, and Jason's still dragging his feet. There must be something wrong with her. Yeah. It's like what? Julia Roberts, runaway bride over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't trust her. That's I was they... about to do a movie quote, and I know I read my audience, and I said, I I'm not offended. We would have fake laugh for sure. Okay. Give, give me, give me that. I want to hear it. Julia Roberts, Julia Rob her. Right, well, that's passes. why it's Jonah Hill. So he was. Mm, sorry, John, you're not going to like my opinions, but um, <laughs> it, it. I think being on TV and gaining a platform does. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to go back. We got to go back. We missed the question. Do you... and sometimes they're right, but. Did John care at all about social media or like what people thought of him? Did John care about social media or what people thought of him? On the internet? Mm, sorry, John, you're not going to like my opinions, but <laughs> um, it, it, I think being on TV and gaining a platform does change some people. Yeah. And I was very frustrated with how our breakup was handled after the fact, because I do think he cares like mm. what these strangers think about him and us. And mm-hmm. it's, it was a little frustrating for me yeah. because I'm like, who cares what right. they think or like how they're interpreting this? Because right. I don't know if you know, but when I came out with my quote statement, it was literally like statement. Yes, we are. We're, bro- yeah, we are yeah. not together. We're- I'll just say this in defense of John here <clears throat> is that it's I wish we could all take a pill and not care what other people think of us. What you think of me is none of my business. I'm literally reading a book called What You Think of Me is None of My Business. It's not easy. There's a lot of psychology there. There's a lot of um, genetic code that wants us to be liked by the community. Now, uh, what the blessing could be for John and for everyone involved, including myself, including myself as a commentator in this community, is... You're part of a community that's extra critical. You're part of a community that is going to be extra negative in certain instances towards you. That everyone's looking for heroes and villains. So by putting yourself into this community, maybe you can burn off that feeling of wanting to be loved so much. Because John and everyone else out there, and I tell myself this, what they think of you is none of your business. But that's easier said than done. And for anyone who's not been in that situation, trust me when I say that. It's easier said than done. Not together, yeah. I was just... I was so annoyed of like having to cater to the public asking and making a statement and coming out. And, and I was literally like cornered into a wall to like essentially come out quicker than I wanted to about yeah. it. So Katie's saying, who cares what they think? You dumped me. And so I said, fine. And I typed that sentence and I sent it for you. I sent it and I was like, rip the bandaid off. I don't yeah. care yeah. anymore. I'm so done. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then did you go and read it after? Ooh, I don't actually know if I wanted to hurt myself is that, that a, bad. Yeah, I know. Oh, it gets. Oh, it's like Reddit. Dark. I'll say this. I'll say something personal here because, you know, you, we, we got to pay the bills. I invited both of them to my wedding and I <laughs> and, and not not knowing that they had broken up. If you have any questions or want to know all of the <laughs> the behind the scenes of that conversation, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I will talk about it there. Um <laughs> <laughs> that is a shame, shameless promotion. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Um, I'll tell you. We'll talk about it. Yeah, they were on the invite list. If you want to cry, yeah, mm. just go to Reddit. <laughs> yeah, if you want to feel like the biggest failure, really? loser, piece oh of shit, oh read man. about yourself on Reddit. Oh, I just did like a deep dive on like orcas. But, See, there's a good place in Reddit somewhere, but yeah. the, uh, not the Bachelor subreddit. No, no. Uh, wow. Okay. But people are Fair now enough. questioning where you two stand. Are you friends? Yeah. Or can are you? Do you yeah. Plan on getting not there? after this well, episode. Yeah. Friendship wise, well, weren't you guys just hanging out? So when we broke up, we did all like us and our friends go to a fair together, and yeah. it was very fine. It was whatever. But then you know, like the more time apart, the more those things that were like cute and quirky and fun, the more like you're annoying. The yeah. F- me. Sorry, yeah. I don't know if I could swear on here. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, good. Um, and so uh, we definitely had a lot of like little, I don't know, tizzies together. Yeah. He would love to stay friends. Uh, 
friends is a strong word I think that I would use for him at this time. It's fair. Wow. Friends is a strong word I'd use for him at this time. If you want to listen to the full conversation off the vine with Caitlin Bristow, you can go check that out anywhere you listen to podcasts. We haven't even gotten into her thoughts on Nick Vial. So there's so much more to talk about. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal if you want behind the scenes content going live at 10 a.m. this morning. Wow. Lots to talk about. Lots of tea to sip. Don't forget, there's a link in the description, a link in the comment section to donate to our teacher of the day. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye.